Hello there, my name is Ella and today we're going to talk about how to paint rocks. This video is a part of a material study series that is designed as a month-long YouTube series, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the videos. So we are starting with an isometric cube because it is way easier to understand the lighting with flat planes and three visible sides for three different lighting setups. So using this polygonal lasso tool, we're gonna select our cube and add our base colors. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the colors. Uh, never use the pure white for highlights and the black for your shadows. Rocks and stones have a different spectrum of colors. They can go from yellows and oranges to brown and even blue and purple tones. And I have to be honest, the first time I was trying to do these types of studies, uh, I got totally confused when I, was, when I tried to paint rock and metal. And then I realized that I was using too much white for rocks that it ended up looking like a metal. So have that in mind and don't make the same mistakes. As you can see here on my color palette, I have the lightest tones, middle tones, I would say, and the darkest one. So when we color pick, for example, the lightest tone I have here, you can clearly see that it's not pure white. It's not totally saturated, but it's somehow a little bit gray and yellow mixed, let's say, maybe a little bit more orange and gray. So it's not totally uh, white. When we color pick this one, uh, it's a little bit desaturated and it goes, uh, again, it, it stays in the orange spectrum. When we color pick this, it's a little bit more uh, red more yet red and as you can see my colors go from like yellow to oranges and red and then my darkest color is basically a little bit more purple so it's a little bit more saturated and it's not like here for example let's remove this selection um so if my darkest value would be like let's say this, it will be too dark in my opinion. And uh, I don't know, I first of all, I like my uh, shadows to be a little bit more saturated. So that is why it's a little bit more to this side. But if I like move it a little bit more to the saturated uh, area, it is too saturated. For this case so you can choose your own colors and you can absolutely color pick uh, from the reference photos just like I did for this one and I just a little bit adjust these like shadow colors uh, but I really like these uh, yellowish and orange tones a little bit of red and this purple is just like I don't know I think it goes well uh, with these colors Let's bring back that selection. Okay, so with uh, a bucket tool, G on the keyboard, or here, I will place my base, base color and I would usually go with like this shade, but I'm going to with this lighter one uh, because that would be my lightest color for my top plane. Okay, now that we have our base color placed, I'm gonna lower the opacity of this cube like so, okay. I'm gonna rename this like base shape. And then I'm gonna add a new layer on the top of my base shape layer. And by clicking Alt on a keyboard, you'll see this little arrow, which means that we are going to clip mask this layer to the bottom one. What that means? That means when we want to paint on the clipped layer, uh, we actually cannot paint anything, anything outside this shape, as you can see, like I'm painting all over it. And now let's paint our lighting setup, which means that light is coming from the top. So light, light is coming from the top left. So that means that our top plane is going to be the lightest one. Our left plane is going to be like middle tone and a little bit darker and the right one is going to be the darkest. A 
Okay, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to back to my base shape layer and I'm going to mask it. Make sure to be on a mask part and not on the layer. Now when using our brush and using black color, we can basically erase parts of our shape like so and actually make some shapes out of it and erase some parts if we think we need it basically we can model it and when we're using the white color we can bring back some parts that we didn't like or think that we need to bring it back so it's very useful tool and i always use mask for this kind of stuff and in this case it will help us to make more organic looking shape out of this cube just like rocks and stones in nature have because I have a really light colors I'm going to change my background into a little bit more darker color because my eyes already hurt. Rocks and stones don't really have those straight lines so I'm just gonna shape them a little bit and how I'm gonna do that is basically on a new layer I'm gonna create a new layer press once again alt to clip it so we only paint inside this shape I want to make some uh, shadows on my top plane I'm just color pick this middle tone and that will be my shadow for uh, the lightest plane if I want to make shades on this plane I'm gonna color pick this one okay and if I want to make some shadows on the darkest plane I'm actually gonna color pick darker shadow from my color palette And what's gonna make those cuts really pop are some highlights. Now, if our light source is coming from the top left corner and it goes down to our cube from this direction, light is actually gonna hit, so the light is actually gonna hit the opposite edge from the light source. In this case, if this is our cut or groove, we will add light on the on this side of the groove. So having that in mind, let's place our highlights and make those grooves and cuts pop. What we're gonna do next is to add some textures to it because rocks and stones have a lot of different and random textures, uh, cuts, grooves. So using a hard, hard drawn brush with pressure opacity, we're gonna color pick the darker value from the one that we want to paint over and then go back under the dark and dark values and highlights and make a new layer so these textures will be underneath everything that we did right now so just slightly start to add some textures feel free to color pick the main color and correct some parts uh, layer that texture until you achieve the look that you want So 
so very slightly moves very i wouldn't say careful because this is really random Every, everything that i'm doing here is really random but i'm trying to think that if i make this darker part or shape i want to make it a little bit more believable so i'm gonna color pit pick the main color that i'm painting on and then just slightly like try to shape it even more to gain like that rock texture so color picking in this case is really important because that is the only way that that you can create these textures and volume on the rock Okay, now that we added our darker values for this shape and texture, now I'm gonna color pick lighter, lighter color, and then basically paint underneath that texture that I just did to really indicate the, those grooves. And now you can clearly see the difference with the shapes and without the shapes. So at this stage, it is basically the main part is to play with those shapes, play with the play with the darker and lightest values and actually create the shape of a rock that you want. Still have in mind that shapes and cuts and like the whole texture on rocks and stones is pretty much random. So don't overthink too much but again have those fundamentals in your mind now i'm just gonna continue what i was doing i'm gonna play with those shapes correct some parts uh, add some parts maybe and see you after a quick time lapse Okay, right now I'm gonna add a new layer, don't forget to clip it, and then I'm gonna change my blending mode to multiply. Okay, I'm gonna select soft round pressure opacity brush, I'm gonna size it oof, like so, let's say. I'm gonna color pick my darkest value here, and I'm just gonna paint paint over the darkest plane. This actually allows us to paint over something and not actually ruin what's underneath this layer, if that makes sense. I'm still on my multiply layer 
and I'm gonna darken a little bit of this side and then I'm gonna add another layer clip it and change it to soft light I, I really like to use soft light but you can feel free to use overlay or any other uh, blending mode that you prefer but I, I always go with a soft light then I'm gonna color pick this middle middle color that we started with and then I'm just gonna add a little bit more color to my top layer then I'm gonna color pick lighter value and then just a little bit lighting up on the top and what I want to do next I'll go back to my soft light layer I'm gonna color pick my second lattice value here and then I'm just gonna slide it a little bit to the yellow tone just to add up that like effect of like actual sunlight I'm gonna add a little bit more to my left plane and I think that works just fine maybe I'm gonna play with some opacity okay basically I think that's it maybe I can st still work on on those cracks and cuts on my multiply layer just to just to darken up a little bit those cracks okay and what i'm thinking right now is to actually do something with my background and add a couple of more like little rocks that fell out of this bigger rock so I think that's what I'm gonna do now Thank you so so very much for sticking up with me and if you came this far in this video thank you once again uh, if you found any value in this video please make sure to subscribe and like this video it really supports me and my channel make sure to check out my coffee page for some free downloadables as well as my full updates on the whole studies everything will be linked down below stay awesome guys and keep creating bye